Hey, how's it going guys? Dan Kirajima here with a new customer service meeting. This is a meeting I had with my team earlier this week and I want to share with you as well. So the customer service meeting, what I went over with my team is why customer service? Why is it so important? What's in it for you? Because just like everybody, we all want to know what's in it for us. So what's in it for our staff members to provide great customer service to our clients? Some of the basics like how to pick up and end phone calls, uh, the, the key to great customer service, how to handle difficult clients, and how to be great at a customer service. So why customer service? And this is what I share with my team. You know, there's a lot of good reasons they gave me, but at the end of the day, I wanna make it as simple as possible. And it's the reason we all come here every day and gather around as a team. It's because it's how we make money. What it is, it's really our product. So I asked my team, hey, what's something that you buy regularly? Or what's something you enjoy purchasing or going to and spending your money on? And it just happened to be that one of my staff members told me about this restaurant she loves. And I said, hey, what's so great about that restaurant? And she told me that it has great soup. So I told them that customer service is our soup. So if you're having a hard time understanding, hey, why is my agency not doing as well? You know, is it the marketing? Is it the sales? Is it the staff? What's the problem here? Well, sometimes we have to look at ourselves and understand and think about, how's our soup? Does it even taste good? So customer service is basically the product that we offer to our clients. And if the product is not good, no matter how hard you market it or how good your sales agents are, it's, people are not going to come back to it because I bet that restaurant she was talking about doesn't need to market as much because the soup is so good people start coming back without even marketing because it's so good and then the word spreads word of mouth they get what well, we call it referrals here but at a restaurant friends will tell their friends and they'll get great reviews online and it'll just grow organically and that's really what we're trying to do here at our insurance agency and I believe that's the secret to building a monster insurance agency is that you have to have a great product meaning great customer service where customers will continue to stay they know what to expect and it's a great product and also they'll tell their friends so if you can get to that level and with the rate increases I like to call it that the agency is going to grow organically from within without having to put outside marketing or new business. It's just gonna grow because, well, first of all, the rate increases are definitely helping us out right now. And then by referrals, okay? So if you can grow your agency without having to spend so much money on marketing, that's a great situation you wanna be in. Getting your whole team's mindset into customer service is a difficult task. It's definitely a challenge wor worth working on because of how great the payoff of it could be. If you have a great customer service product, then we could charge premium prices. Meaning that the better our service is, the less price is going to matter. So different brands, if they charge a lot of money for a, a t-shirt that has a logo on it or a t-shirt without a logo or certain situations where something's gonna cost more, for example, insurance, or if you have fees that you could charge on top of it, it justifies those additional costs if you have a great product or if your customer service is great. And we'll talk about what great customer service means in a little bit, but I explained to my team, hey, the better we do at customer service, the next time they call and add a 2023 car, the pricing is not gonna matter as much because they have all this experience of working with us and they're gonna be okay with whatever we charge them and they're gonna stay with us because the customer service was so good. And that's just gonna make our job so much easier because keeping a policy is so much easier than selling a brand new policy. And we'd rather grow with our, the book of business that we have and keep growing it with, again, the rate increases is certainly gonna help. But, and then if you have any broker fees that you're able to charge, you can't really justify charging a lot if your service is not there. But people will pay for value and for uh, consistency. And if you're offering a great enough product, then you're gonna feel better about being able to charge a little bit higher premium. And if you're offering certain products that are higher in premium in the market, then that's the only way to differentiate yourself is through the service that you deliver to your clients. All right, and we will get more referrals. Okay, same, same thing I was talking about growing organically is through referrals. People will talk about you, how great you were, and then that's 
the best type of leads you could get. I talked about it in other videos before, but the closing ratio on referrals are so much higher. That's the situation you want to put your agency in is where you're keeping your clients, letting those policies grow, and then also having your clients send you referrals. And that's the way to really grow your book of business to a whole nother level. And that's something that's new to me. You know, I think in the past I was thinking about marketing, 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 sales, 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 outside sales, bringing in new customers in. And I feel like at a certain point, I'm just working harder, spending money, but not working smarter. And I feel like the mindset of switching the mindset into more customer service and focusing on the product and the customer experience is really a great opportunity that this challenge has brought to us. So what's in it for you? So I'm talking to my staff members here. So one thing I wanted to share with them is that, again, the, the reason we got, show up to work every day is your income. Now, this is a concept that is really important for us to understand. But as customer service reps, maybe they don't get compensated the same way as sales do, does per transaction. And that's something I could also go over. Maybe I'll make another video of my customer service compensation plan where they do get monitored and tracked and rewarded for customer service changes. Uh, well, that's a separate video. But for now, I just want to share with you guys, anyone at the agency, if they want to take their career to the next level, they have to be at a place where the agency is doing well. So even though the compensation, not like sales, is instantaneous, as in you sell a policy today, you get paid on it in two weeks, customer service is not like that at all. There's definitely delayed gratification there because if you do a great job in customer service, it's gonna help out the agency as a whole, and then that's gonna help your career out later because there's just no way an individual's career could be, could be going this direction, up and up and up, if the agency's direction is going down. It's always gonna be a parallel movement, and if the agency is doing better, everybody within it is gonna be doing better. And that's just something that I try my best to explain to my staff. You know, it does take some business attitude to understand that, but that's something that I always try to do, is that if the agency is doing better, then there's a much better chance that you'll be doing better. And then as an agency owner, I think my history has proven because I've been here for 16 years and I have staff members that have been here for multiple years, that the better I do, I do give it back to the agency. And that's just something that only your actions could earn that trust because I do get it. I think as a staff member, it requires a certain amount of trust to understand that, hey, if the agency does better, would I do better? Because you know some agency owners may not give it back to the agency and put it right back into our lifestyle. So that's something that the agency owner has to prove through their action that they're willing to do. And that's something that uh, I try to do as best as I can. I also try to prove it with taking care of the people that have been loyal to me. So I'm just letting them know that, hey, it's better customer service is going to lead to better future financially for them in the long run. Now that's the positive side. And there's always, when it comes to motivation, there's always a positive side, but there's also a negative side to not, like what if you don't provide great customer service. And the next thing I mentioned to them is your job security. If you're not providing great customer service, then we got issues here because that's job number one. And I told them that, hey, if you're not great at sales, I could live with that because that's a skill and we could all get better at that. But if you're not great at customer service, then I just straight out told them that, hey, it's just better for you to go somewhere else and go fuck up somebody else's business, not mine, because you're really hurting the business when you're not creating good customer service. And um, we, I just went over different things that we're doing, such as randomly listening off live phone calls, um, just tracking you know, who's doing all the customer service transactions. So I highly recommend you guys being able to track all the changes and who's doing them. Definitely uh, automated uh, you know, CRM system will help you with tracking, and I definitely recommend that. But just letting them know that it's a standard that you cannot negotiate with. Great customer service, it has to be there, and if it's not provided, then there's gonna be consequences. So we have a system here, you know, verbal, written, and then suspension. There's a lot of different things that could happen from providing bad customer service, and that's something that you know, as an agency owner, um, you want to believe in as well. And if you're a CSR, you also want to believe that as well because if you're doing a great job, then there's a lot of reciprocity. Like if somebody is doing a great job at customer service and providing that much value to the agency, any agency owner 
especially me, I'm going to want to help that person back because of how much they helped me. And that happens with any situation in business is when you're helping somebody, that person wants to help you back. So if you're providing great customer service, your agency owner is going to want to take care of you, make sure you're happy and maybe give you some sales opportunities and have a successful career, or amazing career in the insurance business. So by providing great customer service, not only is your career going to be more and you're going to be more valuable to the agency, which makes you more valuable, but it also gives you job security as well. Here's the formula that I have here to make it a little bit easier for my staff members to remember. So it's called the CASA formula that I came up with. What is it called, Mo? Su casa mi casa. That shows how uh, much Spanish I know, but that's kind of like the mindset or the way we can remember this. So what C stands for is care. All right, so if you have care, most of your problems are solved there. As long as you care and the client can sense that, then you're going to be good. You're not going to have customers complain, well, maybe I won't, don't want to get too hard of myself, but if you care, you have a lot of things going for you. You're just going to be a good human being and you're going to try your best for that customer. So rule number one when it comes to providing great customer service is care. The A stands for accuracy. So yeah, if you could provide all the care you can and you're the nicest person in the whole world, but if you're not providing accurate information and you're not actually taking care of them correctly, then you're not a good CSR. So I had a, you know, unfortunately a CSR uh, that just started that was the nicest person ever, greatest attitude, but just could not grasp the understanding of how the system worked. So she would just give out and then she also didn't like asking questions. So she would give out wrong information constantly. You know, this price is this, this car has been added when it's actually just an underwriting. And it was just a mess as far as causing confusion to the customers. And as much as she, as nice as she was, we had to let her go because her customer service work wasn't accurate. So you cannot tell somebody they're covered when they're not, or this car is covered when it's not, or the next payment is going to be this when it's not. So accuracy is going to be the second part because at the end of the day, what the customer wants is accurate information. And then the S stands for speed. So I'm pretty sure, you know, if you're on the phone with a customer service rep and if you have to call a place for some reason, or if you have to chat with a, a different company that you do business with, the thing that you're, it's going to matter to you is speed which is great for us because we value speed too. We don't want to spend you know, hours and hours taking care of customer service issues. We want to do it as efficiently as possible and as fast as possible. And again, with care and accuracy too, but speed is something the customers really value. In fact, they're willing to again, pay premium prices for faster speed. So I told my staff members that the other thing that you need to always care about is to do things in a speedy fashion because in the world we live in, that's what our customers want. And then the A for the last part of being providing great customer service is actually something that's going to benefit us that some of my customer service reps forget. And that's the ask. Sometimes we do such a great job at customer service, but we forget the last part, which is ask. So if you're doing such a great job, you're giving and you're giving and you're giving, let's not forget to ask. So things that we want to ask for are, hey, who do you have your life insurance with? Hey, do you know anybody else that we could help? So life insurance, homeowner's insurance, or any other product you offer, anything other insurance products we could help you out with, asking for referrals. So if you do three out of the four, care, with accuracy, with speed, you're going to be good. But if you could do the fourth one at the end, ask, then you're truly doing a great job at being a great customer service rep for your insurance agency. All right, so we're going to get into some of the basics of the customer service here, how to pick up phone calls. Now, this sounds pretty basic, but it is very important, and we do want to have consistency, meaning everybody in their agency is doing it the same way. So the first step is going to be a proper greeting. The proper greeting should include a thank you. Thank you for calling. For us, it would be farmers. Thank you for calling farmers. How can we help you today? Okay. And with our system, we are able to find out if they're calling a different language line. So we want to be able to answer it if it's English or Spanish based on the caller ID, it will tell you. Now, it could be an English one, but they may actually be a Spanish speaker because it's customer service. And you also should have a phone system that lets them understand if it's a sales call or a customer service call. So the phones, but the way you answer the phone call should be a proper greeting, meaning you know which language it's in. 
All right, and then enthusiasm, because people will make their decision if they like you or not in just about two seconds. So it's better to just get that out of the way. Hey, you know, have good energy, have good enthusiasm. So that way, right off the bat, they like you. And that way you don't have to work an uphill battle during the rest of the conversation to try to get them to like you. So get that part out of the way. Next is confirmation. So look them up as fast as possible. This is really gonna help you out, make the conversation again, because they're gonna believe that you're fast, you're efficient, and you know what you're doing by being able to look them up faster. So you can say, hey, Mr. John uh, Smith, thank you for giving us a call again. Uh, I see that you have two vehicles, you live in San Diego, and you have your homeowners. Just give them some type of information there that you're confirming that you know who you're talking to, and that's gonna give them certainty that you're the one that could help them. And again, you're front loading that work by saying that I know what I'm doing and it will make the rest of the conversation a lot easier for you. Calling by their name is an important thing for me. Okay, that's rule number one of building a relationship is remembering their name and calling them by your name. Mr. Smith, if someone's older than you, calling them by the last name and just showing respect and letting them know that you, people like to hear their name, so just give them what they want. Call them by their name and that's gonna make the conversation a lot easier for you too. And then clarification with enthusiasm. So whatever they wanna do, Repeat it. Hey, I want to make a payment. Okay, great, Mr. Smith. I'll be happy to help you make a payment today. I want to add a car. Okay, Mr. Smith, with enthusiasm too. Perfect. All right, I'll be happy to uh, help you add a vehicle today. I want to know how much it is to add a car. Okay, great, Mr. Smith. I'll be happy to let you uh, find out how much it is to add a car for you. So whatever to say, just repeat it. So again, you're just letting them know that, hey, I understand you. I know what I'm doing. And repeating it is the best way to confirm with them and to clarify what they're calling about and letting them know that you could help them out in an enthusiastic way. That way, when it comes down to the price, they'll be like, okay, great, let's do it. Okay, Mr. Smith, it's gonna be $200 more to add this car onto your policy. And if everything was going well, they're gonna say, all right, perfect. Now, if it wasn't going well, bad attitude, bad tone, bad confirmation, not calling by the name, no clarification, no enthusiasm, it, all right, it's gonna be $200 a month then they're gonna start writing you about the price. Why is it so much? And it's not gonna be easy for you to make these transactions. And your job, frankly, isn't gonna be as easy as it could be too. Let's go ahead and clarify what they're um, needing help with and let them know that you can help them out with that. How to end phone calls, recap, and gratitude. So at the end of the conversation, let's just say, hey, Mr. Smith, it was great taking care of your payment today. Just recap what you did. It was great adding your car, we did these type of coverages, go over everything, just recap everything you did. Just also helps to just for compliance reasons, just to make sure that you guys are on the same page. And then obviously ask them, is there anything else I could help you out with? Also thank them. So calling them by the name, again, at the end is important too. I tell my staff members that we always wanna say their names at least twice. Once in the beginning and once at the end, at the very minimum. That's the minimum. Now, if it's a pretty longer conversation, it's good to sprinkle that in there throughout the conversation. But at the very minimum, we should say at least twice, in the beginning and at the end. Thank them and then, you know, after asking them, is there anything else I could help you out with? Then ask for something. Ask for a referral. Ask for a life insurance. Uh, who do you have your life insurance with? Ask for something if they say, uh, no, that's it, that's all I needed. Or if, especially if you, if you sense gratitude from the, hey, thank you so much for helping me, that's the perfect time to ask. But let's not forget that part because you're doing a great job doing customer service. Let's try to get something out of these situations. Let's look at these as opportunities to go over the discounts and add another line of business for them. Uh, you also wanna track everything, all right? So tracking is gonna be very important because you just cannot improve anything that you're not measuring. So keep tracking who's doing the customer service work and really recognize them and compensate them based on their production. Just like sales, we could track customer service transactions, payments, changes, everything you want and make sure you're compensating them for those actions. And then audits, always listen in on your calls, see who's doing a good job, see if you have any complaints. I think that's the next thing on here. Yeah, see what, what kind of procedures you have for complaints. Your agency does not want to have any complaints. Your agency does not want to have any one-star reviews. It's just something, again, it's your product. If your soup sucks, then there's just no way you're going to have a successful insurance agency. So if someone tells you, hey, your soup tasted horrible today, you want to look into that and see what the problem is. And if there's a lack of training or attitude adjustments necessary, then you want to make sure you're on top of that as far as your agency, because that's how important it is. How to handle difficult clients. 
So at my agency, I want to have my staff members have a good day. There's some customer service jobs out there where they go to the job and they just get yelled at all day long. And I mean, that wouldn't be a great job, you know, and that wouldn't be a sustainable job. And that's exactly what I don't want for my staff members. So here's a system that I have that I teach my staff members to do if they have any type of customers that are angry at them. So first thing to do is have empathy, all right? So no need to get mad back, no need to get defensive. You know, these clients most likely are having a bad day, not due to you, or maybe not even due to the insurance, or maybe just they're just having a bad life. So we just want to feel sorry for them that they have so much anger in their life that has nothing to do with you. So have empathy and really feel bad for them uh, is step number one. Number two is clarify their issues. Because sometimes people are just mad and just rambling and they're just getting off topic and just going all over the place as far as everything they're unhappy with with their agency. So we want to just make sure we're on the same page with them. Hey, Mr. Smith, so from what I understand, you're upset that this next monthly payment is $500. And from what, from what you calculate, what you think is should be this much. Whatever it is, you know, hey, it sounds like you believe you should have rental car coverage even though you don't you believe the claims department should pay for it. So you just want to clarify that. And sometimes clarifying it will actually make the client feel like, oh, what I'm asking for is a little unreasonable. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But once you clarify it, sometimes it will make them think about it. Yes, that's what I want. And it will maybe sink into them that, hey, actually what I'm asking for is not reasonable. And sometimes it is reasonable. But whatever it is, you just want to cut all the BS and, and be on the same page. So this is what you want, correct? In a nice way. Clarify what they want. And then apologize, agree, and thank. So never hurts to apologize. Hey, so sorry about this. And then instead of saying, I understand, the best way to get them to not get mad at you is to agree with them. Hey, I agree. You know, insurance costs are getting ridiculous. Or, hey, I agree, maybe we should explain that a little bit better. Hopefully, the claims department could cover that rental car coverage even though you didn't have it. Hey, I, I agree, you know, insurance is a scam. Whatever they're saying, <laughs> it could get pretty, you know, outrageous sometimes. But just agree and thank them for the feedback. Because once you agree with somebody, then there's no argument. So there's really no reason for you and that person to get at it. So if you agree with them and also thank them, there's really no way that person could get even further mad at you. And then I will try my best to help you. That's the line right there. I will try my best to help you. The first thing you're doing is letting them understand that there's nothing you can do. You don't have the authority to just waive fees or change the bill. Let me try my best to get a hold of somebody, and you could exaggerate here, that could make an exception just for you. I might have to be on hold for a couple hours, which could be true. I might have to talk to the vice president. I'm going to spend a lot of time for you and see what I could do for you. Okay, so again, you're letting them know. You never want to say, no, can't do that, sir. That's just the way it is because that's going to lead right into, I want to talk to your manager. And here at our agency, we don't have, we never have, I want to talk to your manager because we do this regularly. A, when you feel somebody getting angry, you do this early on so it doesn't get escalated. So before, you can, once you start sensing that someone's getting mad or if they're already mad, the first thing we want to do is get them off the phone. I want to work on this for you right now. I totally agree. This is not right. Let me work on this for you and see, see what I could do for you. I'm going to call them right away. Sometimes they still want to vent, but we're like, okay, got it. No, I'm going to call them right now and see what I could do for you. And just try to get them off the phone as soon as possible because the longer you're on the phone with them, the more wrong things you can say and then can get more mad and more mad and more mad. So just get them off the phone and that way they could vent somewhere else and they could go about the rest of their life and not have to bother you at your job. And then also just, again, give them a time frame. Okay, this is going to be very difficult, okay? Sometimes I even said it myself, hey, I've been in this business for 16 years and they've never made an exception on this, but I'm gonna try my best to see if they can make an exception just for you. So this is gonna take a couple days, but I'm definitely gonna try my best for you. So that bought you a couple days. Or if it's something easier, you can say, hey, I'm gonna work on this right away. I'm gonna see if I could waive this fee or give you an extension, see what I could do for you. And I'm gonna give you a call back as soon as possible. It may take me a day. So if you could give me till tomorrow, 24 hours, I'll give you a call back. 
That gives them time to settle down, go about their lives, and most of the times, insurance is like 0.01% of their lives, so they're totally forget about it. Next day, you call them back. Sometimes they don't even answer. You leave a voicemail, or you, you do talk to them, but you do need to follow up with them. Okay, so you don't want to say, I'm going to work on it, and not call them back. Follow up with them, give them a call back, and say, hey, it could be a voicemail, or it could be uh, if a conversation, hopefully, and say, hey, you know I try my best, but they just wouldn't do it for us. Now, when you use the word, they wouldn't do it for us, that makes you on their team. And this is what you're trying to do, is put them on your team. They just wouldn't do it for us, like I tried for us. So that way, you're not the one saying, no, I can't do this for you. And a lot of times, they're just going to say, even while they're on the phone, the first conversation, they're going to say, okay, thank you for trying your best. And the second time, they may say, thank you for trying your best. That's the best case scenario. Now, there's certain situations where we actually try and do get it done for them. Sometimes we're thinking like, oh, this is kind of unreasonable. Well, let me ask the company anyway, see what I could do. And we actually are able to take care of what they wanted. Sometimes we don't even call the company because the ask is just too um, ridiculous. But we still say that we tried. Once you get back to them, most of the time, that should do it. Now, if they get into, that's ridiculous, I can't believe it, and they still keep on complaining, then you could do that thing over again. Okay, you know what? You're right. I agree. Let me try again and see what I could do. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this one. Is it okay if I call you back in a week? You could do this loop for, for as long as you want. Most people are not going to be that unreasonable. A lot of times, what you're really doing here, if you're really good at this, is that you're going to turn an upset client to someone that says, hey, thank you for trying. So give that a try, guys, because I don't want you guys to be dealing with angry clients all the time. Just tell them you'll try your best and do try your best. Or if you can't, at least tell them you tried your best and they wouldn't do it for us. You're going to have a much better customer service job. And a couple advanced things that you could go over if necessary, and this is more from maybe managers, getting mad with them. Now, I wouldn't do this if you're a rookie, but I've done this plenty of times where someone will say, hey, this person said this and that and that, and I'm really upset because, you know, that's the wrong information. I will say, hey, I agree. I can't believe she gave you the wrong information. Thank you so much for this feedback because with this info, these are the type of training opportunities that I can improve my operation. So thank you so much. But I cannot believe she said that. I hope it wasn't intentional. And I will still start getting mad myself, depending on how mad they are. I will get mad with them and I'll say, you know what, after this conversation, I'm gonna have a talk with her right now. I'm gonna have this talk, I am so upset at her, and you know what, I'm considering terminating her. And the clients will sometimes say, whoa, 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 because sometimes they're searching the story too. They'll start feeling bad about the situation, say, well, you don't have to be that mad. So I had, I've, had, I've had to use that one a few times. Another one I have used is when they do, when you get back with the news that they wouldn't do it for us, you just say they wouldn't do it for us. And I'm so upset because I spent so much time on this and I truly believe that you shouldn't have to pay for the last six months like you said. They wouldn't just, wouldn't do it for us. I'm so, and then as you get riled up, sometimes they'll say like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Calm down. It's not that big of a deal. So again, this is a little bit more advanced. You can do it if you're in more of a managerial situation. But getting upset with them, don't try it all the time, but you may need to do that at, at, at certain times. And then also, you know, it's important to remember that not all clients are the same. And that might not be the correct thing to say, but same thing at our agency. You know, if someone is producing the 100K new business premium a month, been with me for 11 years, and somebody over here is brand new and I'm paying them to train them and they're making mistakes and they're actually costing me money, I'm sorry, but I'm treating them differently. And same thing with clients. You know, if they have minimum liability limits, they're calling every month and they're angry at you, or if they have a three car policy with multiple homes and umbrella policy and business policies, then we're gonna have to treat them differently. And it's just maybe not, the, again, the right thing to say, but that's just business. And if it's a smaller policy that's always giving you some problems, you could graciously letting them know, hey, I'm so sorry, I, again, I agree. You know, we haven't been doing a good job or our rates aren't the best. So, you know, I hate to see you leave, but you know, there are, are some other options out there for you. And I really hope you don't, but I wouldn't blame you if you shopped around and found another carrier. That's kind of in a way you're hoping them, depending on, again, their attitude and how they're treating your staff. And if they're dis disrespecting your staff or if they're causing that much issues, there are situations where you may have to go there too because, again, I care about my staff. I don't want my staff 
sometimes we have to listen to those conversations and understand, you know, what the full story is and the, what the full context is. But there are sometimes situations where you rather not have your agency lose a client than have your staff go through some of the, you know, clients that we have to deal with because it's an imperfect world out there. How to handle rate increases. All right, this is an important one right now because this is every other call. How to handle rate increases. First thing first is you want to find out why it went up and explain. So again, care, accuracy, and speed. You don't want to sit there and say, um, 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 and not understand why it went up. You want to be able to pull that thing app fast, find out if it's an accident, it's a ticket, if it's a mileage, if it's a losing a discount, or if it's a statewide rate increase, and explain that to them professionally. And what you don't want to do is just say, hey, that's what it is. You always want to give them an option, and really the option is where the opportunity comes from. So the options is going over coverage. So I tell my staff, hey, if they talk price, you talk coverage. Hey, the price went up, I'm a sad, I don't like the price going up, then you talk coverage because a lot of times people will just think of insurance as just a bill. They don't really see what they're getting out of it. But when you talk coverage, then it's letting them know there's a correlation between what you pay and what you get. So hey, okay, I totally understand. I agree with you that you know insurance cost is getting expensive these days. So not that we want to or we recommend it at all, but we could go over your coverages to see if there's anything you want to reduce to offset that premium increase. Some people will be willing to listen to you, not be willing to because that's not what you actually want to do, but you're, the thing that we want to do is just give them an option. So you could say, hey, you know, you really don't want to, we don't really recommend it, but if you really had to, you could take off uninsured motorist coverage and your premium will go down this much. What do you think? And a lot of times people will say, oh, no, 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 that's okay. And by giving them the consequences, so that means if somebody without insurance hits you, you wouldn't be covered for that. Then they may be like, oh, you know what, you know what? In their mind, they're, think, they're thinking like, oh, I, I got to stop being cheap here because the, this person gave me the consequences and the fear of that happening is not worth the money I'm going to save. Or you could say, hey, this vehicle is 20 years old and you still have full coverage. Do you want to go liability on that? That mean, means that if anything happens to that vehicle, we're not responsible for fixing or replacing. How do you feel about that? And some people may say like, you know what, actually, you know, that vehicle isn't worth that much anymore to me. Let's make that change. And you go over some changes and you may make some changes based on their financial situation. Some people really need to make some changes these days. Sometimes if you're really good at customer service, you'll go over their coverage on a rate increase situation and actually increase their coverage because they're, you, sent, you, you let them know what the consequence is. So it's a great opportunity for you to go over the coverages, find some gaps, and give them what they want. Sometimes they need to reduce coverage. Sometimes they realize what they have and they want to increase coverage. So hey, you have three vehicles here. It looks like you have extra cars. There's only two of you guys. Is there any additional household members? No. Okay, do you need rental car for all three vehicles? Okay, it's not that much savings, but just going over the coverage is so important in this opportunity because the rate increase, they, you are reminding them they're actually getting something for what they're paying. And the second thing is their discounts. Now again, you're doing something here is you can't complain your way into getting lower rates. You have to change something in the policy. You have to either change your coverage or you have to add a discount. So you want to let them know that. We can't just lower your price for no reason. So we have to either lower your coverage or you want to add a discount. And by adding a discount, meaning this is the perfect time for us to cross out another line of business. We could talk about homeowners insurance. If you don't see a home or life insurance, whatever companies your products, uh, your company sells, products your company sell. So let's definitely go over discounts there because this is a great opportunity to do so. And then the don'ts when it comes to customer service. Really, I only have one of them for us, for my team that I share with, is don't be unlikable. There was a study that I read that went over what type of doctors and the malpractice um, claims that doctors face. So, you know, doctors, sometimes they make mistakes, and sometimes when a family member dies, they did a study on which doctors get sued and which ones don't. And surprisingly, it wasn't due to what they actually did. There were plenty of doctors that actually made a mistake that didn't get sued. There are actually doctors that didn't make a mistake but did get sued. So what the study found out that the only determining factor if they were going to get sued or not was their likability. So I tell my staff, all you got to do is don't be unlikable. If you're likable, then even if you make a mistake, you're going to be able to fix that through showing that you care. And same thing with doctors probably. If, as long as they show remorse and they cared, and, they, and the family felt like that was coming from a good place, 
then you're not going to get those one-star reviews or you're not going to get these complaint calls. And as an agency owner, you don't want to have your day filled with news of unhappy customers. So I told my staff, all you got to do is be likable. And being likable is a skill. And it, it pays off. I told my staff members too, like, hey, if you're likable here, then sometimes you make mistakes, you're not great at certain things. It makes up for a lot of it. And same thing with customers. Um, and people may not may feel like, hey, that's not fair. Like, just because this person is likable, then they get better things happening to them as far as career-wise. But that's the game. You know, that's like saying like, hey, that's not fair. Like, the best basketball player always wins because they're good at basketball. Well, the business game is almost like, well, who's the most likable? So if you're likable, then better things are going to happen to you because you're bringing value to the agency and you're helping people and you're trying. And that is a true skill when it comes to communication. So within the business or with your clients, I told my staff members being likable is really the key to winning in this business. So that's something that you got to work on. But if you're unlikable, that's when we have issues. So how to be a great customer service rep? Be a long-term thinker. You know, again, customer service, being great at it, is not gonna help you pay your bills or increase your income instantaneously as like getting a sale. But you gotta be a long-term thinker. If you're thinking about committing to your career as an insurance agency at this particular agency or the agency you're working at, then you want that place to succeed. Because again, you cannot have better financial future if the place you're working at it doesn't have a good financial future. So be a long-term thinker. It's almost like working out. If you work out now, you're not gonna get the results right away, but two years later, five years later, it's gonna make a huge difference in how you feel and how your body looks. So same thing. You wanna be a long-term thinker and not think about just right now. What's easy for me right now? Do the hard work, take care of the customers. If you do a good job with your customers, that customer could either cancel now or stay for another 10 years. And you definitely want to have an agency owner that understands the value of that and sees that and tracks that. Because I track all the changes and I see things like, wow, this person waived, was able to waive a fee. This person contacted the DMV. You, show, you get a lot of appreciation by being able to track what each staff member is doing as customer service work. And also by helping out people, you know, sometimes you'll do customer reviews just to see or handle a rate increase customer you want CSRs that want to handle those things because they're thinking in the back of mind, okay, I'm going to take care of them. You know, I had a staff member that just wanted to do a customer review because this person wanted to have, wanted to go over all their policy. Perfect. Okay. They increased their personal liability, personal contents coverage on a renter's policy from like 30,000 to 60,000 because they have more stuff now because they have kids. Liability was only 100,000 raised to 300,000. That doesn't make a big difference. Went over their auto insurance and found out that nothing really needs to be changed there. But the whole reason they took their time, explained everything, went through both of their policies is to set up for the ask. Okay, so we're in responsible for taking care, protecting your family, so what, what about your life insurance situation? So even though it didn't work out, the whole conversation was to set up for that ask for that life insurance. So that's another thing, be a long-term thinker and um, be someone that your future self will thank you for. Be a team player. I think providing customer service is the ultimate sign of being a team player because again, it, sometimes it doesn't help your individual income right now, but it's helping the whole teams. Sometimes we're providing great customer service. Well, you're definitely helping out the agency as a whole, the agency owner. And if the agency owner is not making money, then there's not going to be enough money to pay everybody. But also some of the staff members or the sales agents too, because you're avoiding them from having chargebacks. And just by having a great customer service rep, Besides training, I can't think of anything else that will make you a better teammate than that. You care about the team. You care about the whole, the community, not just you, the company. So by providing great customer service, you become a great team player and an agency owner like me and will really care about great team players because that's what really helps out teams. Finding people that are willing to, I would say sacrifice, but yeah, Know your role, and that's why some of the uh, early, you know, people with earlier experience are start off with customer service because that's how you kind of pay your dues. And if you do really great in customer service, that gives me a sign that hey, you're ready to take the next step and move into sales. All right, be patient and stay ready. And then the last tip on how to be great at customer service 
is to be a happy person. There's really no way you could take care of others if you're not even taking care of yourself. So we really want to figure out what's making you a happy person or not. Because if you're good, then there's really no, it shouldn't be difficult to provide great customer service because you're just a happy person. So you want to figure out, you know, some of the obvious things that I talk about repeatedly with my staff is make sure you're getting enough sleep, you're eating the right things, because if you're taking care of yourself, self-care on the weekends, getting some sunlight, hanging out with people that makes you feel good, getting rid of toxic relationships, and just making your life as a whole good, then you're gonna be able to come into work and you're gonna like people generally, and you're gonna take care of them. But if there's some issues going on inside of you that makes you not happy, then it's gonna be very difficult to make the other person happy. That's the key to great customer service is figuring out what makes you happy and taking care of yourself first and foremost. And that's gonna make you come to work and, and bring value to the rest of the world. And that's how you give and that's how you get back. So I told my staff that, hey, whatever you have to do, this is an internal game. Figure out what makes you happy. Please be happy. Come into work and let's make our clients happy. And that way it's a win-win for all of us. So that's it. The customer service meeting I had with my team. Hope it helps. Hope you're able to deliver great customer service because remember, it's what you sell. That's the only thing that makes the difference between having a great agency or not because if you have great customer service, your client's gonna stay with you. They're gonna keep referring more business. With that rate increase, it's gonna keep growing and growing and growing. And no matter how much marketing or how great your sales are, if you don't have great customer service, you're, there's only a so far as your agency could get to. And I wanna go big. I wanna build a massive agency. So that's why this meeting was so important Thank you for watching. Until next time, let's get it.